Hello and welcome to this presentation on the use of deceptive design in a game's free-to-play transition. My name is Hilda Hadan. This is research that I conducted with my colleague Sabrina Skandura and my supervisors Dr. Leah Zhang Kennedy and Dr. Lenart Naka. In the past decade, the free-to-play business model has become popular in the video game industry. Several game companies have considered transitioning their games from the buy-to-play or the pay-to-play models to the free-to-play model because it can lower player entry barriers and offer significant profitability for publishers. Free-to-play games often rely on microtransactions as the main revenue source, which opens the game business model to potential abuse. For example, Epic Games was penalized by the US FTC in 2022 for using dark patterns to drive unwanted purchases in the popular game Fortnite. Deceptive designs, also known as dark patterns, are design practices that trick users into doing things to benefit businesses. When used in games, it can cause negative player experiences such as distorting their sense of time, swaying how much money they spend in the game, and influencing their behavior through psychological and emotional manipulation. Research has found common game mechanics that involve deceptive design patterns, including loot boxes, which are purchasable random rewards, battle pass, which often involves pay to skip or grind, and in-game currencies, which obscure the real cost of items. Although previous studies have identified and classified deceptive design in games, the use of deceptive design practices and their effects on players during games' business model transitions has received little attention. While research has explored the viability of games' transition to free-to-play from other business models from a publisher's point of view, the perceptions and experiences of players are often neglected. Certain design practices implemented during such transitions can be unfair and aggressive to players, which can lead to a degraded player experience. Our research sheds light on commonly adopted deceptive designs during such transitions and their consequences for players. We believe that a richer understanding of this area can contribute to prioritizing ethical design in future game business model transitions, promoting successful and mutually beneficial outcomes for both publishers and players. In this research, we asked two research questions. How do players perceive the role of deceptive game mechanics resulting from business model transitions? What elements contribute to a satisfying and non-manipulative player experience? We study a popular multiplayer first-person shooter game series Overwatch because it recently transitioned from a buy-to-play model to a free-to-play model. We chose the Overwatch game series as our research context for two reasons. First, Overwatch's recent business model transition in 2022 has led to the integration of many deceptive design practices commonly used in free-to-play games. Therefore, the insights gained from our research could offer valuable implications for other free-to-play games. Second, Overwatch presents an opportune moment for studying a group of players impacted by a game before and after the integration of deceptive design practices. Overwatch players, especially those who have played both Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2, are likely able to compare the changes in design practices that the business model transition triggered. Our methodology involves an analysis of Overwatch 2 game mechanics to identify deceptive patterns in newly introduced game design mechanics as a result of the game's business model transition. Through a deductive approach using the deceptive design taxonomy from the literature, this analysis identifies deceptive design practices implemented during the transition to free-to-play and provides the foundation for our study of player perspectives and experiences. In the next stage, based on a thematic analysis of Reddit posts, we examine players' perceptions and experiences of these deceptive game mechanics. The analysis provides evidence of how these deceptive design practices affected the player experience and resulted in frustration, disappointment, and game abandonment. Our game mechanics analysis identified nine potentially problematic deceptive game mechanics in Overwatch 2 which were then confirmed to be truly problematic in our analysis of Reddit posts. We observed several temporal deceptive patterns designed to encourage longer gameplay time. These included the repetitive daily and weekly challenges and the battle pass experience point grind. On Reddit, players reported the approximately 56-hour battle pass grind as excessive. However, compared to the excessive grinding efforts, free players found the rewards underwhelming, which further leads to a money-sinking experience. Many players reported that the attainable in-game currency from grinding was considered pathetic and abysmal compared to the prices of game shop items. Consequently, players had to spend real money to obtain better quality rewards from the game shop. This game shop also involves the use of several psychologically deceptive patterns to drive impulsive spending. Players on Reddit also reported social pressure to either grind the battle pass or pay a premium fee to unlock new characters, especially when their team needed them to counter opponents with the character's unique abilities. Our thematic analysis also uncovered psychological burdens. Many players admitted to purchasing premium access to obtain exclusive mythic 
thick skins with customizable features and unique audio effects. Those who paid the premium also felt trapped and obligated to finish grinding the entire battle pass because their progress and premium membership wouldn't carry over to the next season. Apart from reflecting on the negative experience from the deceptive game designs, players on Reddit also expressed additional points of frustration and disappointment from the publisher's predatory marketing strategies. These include price skimming, which involves selling old Overwatch 1 items for double the price in the Overwatch 2 game shop, then gradually lowering the price to create the illusion of a discount. Fake bundles and discounts, such as items being put on sale without ever being sold at their original price to begin with. Limited utility of Overwatch 1 coins as a new currency was introduced in Overwatch 2. Players also expressed disappointment with the publisher's apparent lack of care for overall game quality. They reported issues such as account item loss, previously owned characters being locked behind paywalls, and unfair temporary bans due to disconnections caused by the game's server instability. Players felt helpless because of the delayed responses to bug reports from the game's support team and the absence of compensation for these issues. All these problems created the impression that instead of enhancing player motivation and in-game experiences, the publisher had diverted attention to profitability from the deceptive game mechanics, which consequently diminished the publisher's reputation among the player base. Key takeaways. Our research emphasizes preserving core player motivations during game model transitions. While new mechanics are necessary, we caution publishers against using deceptive tactics that can diminish the allure of free gameplay and harm the player experience. Our analysis of Overwatch 2 found player frustration from the imbalance between player investments and rewards. Players felt that their time, money, and effort weren't adequately compensated, especially compared to the original Overwatch 1. Therefore, it is crucial for publishers to implement fair reward systems that properly recognize player loyalty and contributions. This approach can improve player retention and encourage positive word-of-mouth recommendations. Lastly, our research highlights the importance of transparent communication during game model transitions. Players expect clear explanations of changes, and the lack of transparency exacerbates negative perceptions of game systems. Therefore, we recommend that gaming companies employ user researchers and community managers to actively engage with player feedback. This approach helps address concerns proactively, explains transition rationales, and fosters an environment where players feel valued and heard. Beyond game design practices, our research also has implications for deceptive game design research. Our two-phase methodology grounded our assessment of deceptive game mechanics and actual player experiences, reduced subjectivity in our analysis, and identified genuine sources of player manipulation. As research in this field grows, we encourage future studies to incorporate insights from player perceptions and experiences in the assessment of deceptive design in games. Games. Future game researchers and designers could also uncover insights into alternative, bright patterns from player expectations and feedback. While we used Zagaladal's taxonomy for our analysis, we found that some deceptive patterns were ineffective due to other game elements. Many publishers' problematic practices also fell outside this taxonomy but aligned with more recent research. This suggests the need for a comprehensive taxonomy that extends beyond deceptive interface design to include manipulations arising from game element interactions and problematic business practices. If you have any questions or would like to discuss further, don't hesitate to reach out to us via email. Thank you.